So many people have a question about the change of the gender that it became to be very popular in our generation. So obviously, according to the Torah, it is a wrong thing to do. But the question that somebody was asking me, it, does that have a source in the Kabbalah, that that uh, tendency of people, that desire of people to change their gender, is it possible to say that there is a soul of a man inside of a body of a woman or a soul of a woman inside of a body of a man? Um, so the answer is yes, but it doesn't mean that it gives any legitimate see, legitimacy of, of that act of changing the gender. Um, so there is a story in the writings of the Arizal that it's not really in the writings of Arizal it's a book that is called Shivche Arizal, about the Arizal that was written uh, maybe by the students of his students so the story is about uh, one of the students of the Arizal that he got married with a woman that was very, very beautiful in a very extra, extra, no, unnormal beauty. And then after two years, she passed away. So he came to the Arizal and he was asking him, like, like why Hashem did this to me, that, that, he had, that I had like such a so, so extra beautiful woman, but it was only for two years and then she passed away. It was like... it. W- like he didn't understand why Hashem, why Hashem brought uh, like a, such a such a extra beautiful woman to his life for such a small amount of time. So the Rizal told him something very strange that is con- connected to this question. He told him that in the previous lifetime, this person owed you money, and he didn't pay you. And the way, for some reason, obviously this is connected to many other things, but the way that Hashem chose that this person will pay back he, the money that he owes you, that he came in such a, to, to be such a beautiful, beautiful woman, and to give you this pleasure of being married to such a so beautiful woman for two years, and then then that was the, the money that he owed you, and then when he, he finished the debt, so he passed away. So, so it's basically, you see that there, the, it was a man, and a soul of a man, inside of a body of a woman, but this woman didn't have the desire to be a man. This woman stayed a woman, and she married a man. Yeah? But it was a soul of a man inside of a body of a woman. Okay? And it was a punishment. Because this person didn't do something, he, he, he did something wrong in the previous lifetime. So then he came to this life in a wrong body. Okay? Um, so this is, this is the, the, like one, one, story that we can learn from that is connected and I for me I don't have a reason to doubt the story so I would say it's true but I want I want to emphasize that it's not from the Arizal himself so for me whatever is coming from like other sources and they speak about the Arizal so it could be true but it's not like 100% solid truth because it's not uh, something that I found in the writings of Rav Chaim Vital in the name of the Arizal. Whatever Rav Chaim Vital wrote in the name of the Arizal, then I know it's from the Arizal 100%. A story like that, it's interesting. We can learn from that, but I don't know if 100% is from the Arizal. Anyhow, <coughs> another, another angle. Um, I don't remember where I saw it one of the books about the uh, reincarnation that 
it was speaking about someone that he had, uh, he was following his lust and desire very, very strongly. And then, like the, the punishment that Hashem gave him was to be born in the body of a woman or something like that. There, there, was, there was another, st- I don't remember where I saw it, but another thing like that. But basically the, the common the monom- denominator of those two stories that something like that, that the man is born in a body of a woman, um, it's a punishment. And in both of those stories, the woman didn't want to change her gender to be a man. She was living like a woman. Um, so, for me, it is very clear that all of those different things that people have uh, confusions about their identity, what they are, um, is not, it's not, the point is not, um, let's put it this way. There is many, many different ways of confusion of identity. And gender is one of them. It's not the only one. People have confusion about their identity in all kinds of different ways. But for me, the, the, the purpose is not so much about what kind of custom I'm wearing. Yeah. The, the identity, the question of the identity, it's not about how do I look, how do I uh, play around the world. The question of the identity is something that every person, obviously also myself, needs to ask and redefine and again and again and again and again and again every moment of life. And the way to get to the answer, again, that's my understanding, is through the Kabbalistic meditation when a person is connected to his neshama inside. And I don't, it's not, it's not, it's, not, it's nothing to do with how the person looks. So, uh, so a person that, that wants to wear this way, that way, and today with the surgery, so can do also a surgery to change his look, that's like missing the point. That's, that's about like the external appearance, external functionality of the person in the world. But for me, the answer and the focus and the purpose is to connect to the internal self. Is not remodeling the the external self. So I believe that when when people are practicing the Kabbalistic meditations and they are connected to their soul, all of the questions of the identity falls down. It, it becomes to be not relevant. Because it's not, it's not, it's not about that. Like that's, uh, it's, it's the, whole, the whole structure of life, the whole priority of life, the whole approach of the person to what he's doing in the world and who is he in the world is redefined when a person is connected to his soul. So th- the problem is, is, is not so much about the, the, those surgeries, yes or no. That's not the question. The question is, are we dealing with our external appearance, our external life, our physical body, or are we dealing and focusing within our soul, within who we are in our inner connection? So. The, the, the question is, where do we look for our identity? 
So I'm trying to look for inside for my identity. So the shame.